Hello and welcome to Fueling Around with me, Jason Plato, and the man who's never, ever been a YouTube phenomenon is Dave Hitty. Hello. Now, Fueling Around is powered by Adrian Flux. As the UK's largest specialist insurance broker, Adrian Flux will tailor a quote to your exact needs and help save you money on your car, your bike, or even your home insurance. Down there, Dave. Have you, you've, you've, you do YouTube, don't you? Well, 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 well we do. Well, we? I suppose we do, we? do, don't we? Yeah, I yeah. mean, maybe I've been a little bit harsh on myself because actually, collectively, we we are something of a phenomenon, aren't we? You know, I mean, on multi platforms, and <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm I'm doing us a, a bit of a disservice because perhaps we are a bigger deal than we give ourselves credit for. Well, that's what I keep telling my mum anyway. Yeah, that well, we are. Oh, by the way. Does your mum still ask you what a podcast is? Because mine does, and my Auntie Carol as well. And I never really know what to say, and uh, you know, but but then they're not sure of the the whole format. No, they don't ask. But if I then ask them if they've listened to it, <laughs> they go, "How do we do that?" Exactly, and then <laughs> and then also, then it's very telling yeah. when you're not entirely sure as well. But I tell you one, I tell you one gentleman who will be sure of all the right answers for these kind of scenarios is our yes. special guest who is currently waiting in the wings here at Fueling Around Studios. He most certainly is. Now, mm. our guest today is something of a phenomenon. Mm -hmm. A gentleman, I love it when we script out a gentleman. Yeah. A gentleman mm. who's created one of the biggest automotive YouTube channels in the world. His real name is Sam Fain, but most of you will probably know him better as Seen Through Glass. Hello, mate. How are you? Very well. I don't know how to follow up the gentleman. Well, you know, we, 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 like to, we like to call all of our, our, our male gendered guests gentlemen because, well, you know, you I think this is a gentleman's club in many ways, you know, and, and it's, it's good to have a gentleman such as yourself, Sam, on here. Well, well I'm exactly. Honest. And he's got a picture of uh, of the shunt on his wall. So that makes him an absolute proper gentleman. Absolutely. <laughs> a proper, <laughs> yeah. proper gentleman. Uh, thank yeah. you so much for joining us. Uh, I'm going to call you Sam. Uh, a, because it's your name and B, because it's easier. Um, your channel is absolutely bonkers in terms of its size and its popularity. This is something that you just started as a, a hobby originally, Sam, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think still to today, it's probably just my mum with a load of fake YouTube accounts <laughs> subscribing over and over again. Um, but yeah, it was it was a side hustle. It wasn't even a side hustle. It was just something to do to distract me from the mundane yeah. life that was my PR consultancy. Um, and and literally grew so quickly that I thought, well, this looks way, way more fun than what I'm doing day to day and became my career. So it's a bizarre story. And I never ended. I never planned to end up here, mm. but somehow I have. And it's it's ended up being quite, quite a lot of fun. Well, well yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's an understatement. But just you, just go back prior to, you know, discovering YouTube or creating your channel. Tell us about what went on before. So yeah, so I, I oh, where do we start? I was born. Uh, no, um, <laughs> I yeah. left school not particularly academic, uh, wanting to uh, go into the music industry. Uh, one of my other big loves was music, so I tried every single job in the world uh, of the music industry. Basically, didn't take enough drugs, so mm. I just didn't fit in that well. <laughs> didn't take any drugs actually, so I literally was shown the door at most places, um, and it ended up in PR. Was the kind of the, the where I found found my feet. And I was doing PR for all kinds of like TV, movies, red carpets, um, had a blast, loved it, thought this was going to be my career for the rest of my life and wanted to do it myself. So I set up a PR consultancy mm -hmm. and my vision was to represent Formula One sponsors because mm -hmm. my other great love was Formula One. So I thought that would be a that would be a good thing to do. I can just represent the sponsors and bish bash bosh. But I, I had like two or three really rogue clients. I did a, a job for Louis Vuitton. I'm not a fashion person. So I right. just felt Is that right? wow. really out of my depth in this room. Like it was, what's that TV show that everyone goes mad about? Emily in Paris or something like that? It's I've a heard Netflix. of it, but I've never sure. seen it. Yeah. My wife watches it. And it was a cliched fashion environment you know everyone was looking down at me and be like oh my god you was a nike trainers what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> so that was weird i worked with a guy called rupert keegan who was a formula yeah. one driver in the 70s yeah. uh, famously uh, drove a penthouse livery yeah, uh, I've, I've, got that, I've got it in my mind's eye that car he yeah. was a legend and real character they, real character and they were trying to make a documentary about him and about mm. that era and I was hopefully going to be doing the publicity for that, but it never really got off the ground. And uh, and then I had a, a theatre 
ticket selling app. So it was like the weirdest okay. consultancy yeah. ever. And I was rather bored. And, and my dad gave me the advice to find a hobby to distract myself from that. And that hobby was making videos. Yeah, so that's kind of how I ended up in this weird world of, of YouTubing, really. But, but, but no direct automotive PR agency kind of history there at all. Absolutely not. Wow. My only wow. experience was when I, I worked at this big agency. It was called Freud's Communications, mm -hmm. or it's yeah. now called just Freud. So yeah, they, they've that. done everything for all the years. Um, and we did a Vodafone gig when Vodafone was sponsoring McLaren. So yeah. I did some stuff with Jensen Button. Yeah. And we'd maybe done a couple of film premieres with like Lewis Hamilton. Hotel. We'd done like a few mm. F1-y, car -y things. And I was like, oh, so, okay, what I'm doing can actually get me close to F1. Mm -hmm. um, and that was the first time I'd realised it. And that's why I had this idea that I could make it happen, but <laughs> not realising F1's a bit of an old boys club and it's, you know, <laughs> all, all the same people doing the same job. So, yeah, I just couldn't crack into it apart from Rupert, you know, Rupert Keegan. Uh, that was the closest I got. So weird that somehow ending up doing YouTube got me closer to F1 than I'd ever wanted to mm. be or, or dreamt of being, but not by the way that I ever, yeah, assumed it would. You know, when you start off, obviously, with the channel, um, the hardest must the hardest part must be beginning it, isn't it? Because I would imagine that, obviously, when you've been doing it for a little while and you gain a reputation, for want of a better word, you know, and obviously people have seen your videos before and then you're... Because I guess a lot of the time you're after favours in terms of borrowing cars, aren't you? You know, and so when you're, when you're starting that off and you kind of go, listen, I'm Sam, I used to work in PR, I've now got my own channel, will you lend me that? And... More often than not, they're going to say no on me. How did you actually get around then? How did you actually get the ball rolling? So I think when I started, two things. Firstly, I, it was never an idea or an ambition that this was a, a job, a career, a business. Mm -hmm. yeah. I never went into it going like, I want to make a YouTube channel with 10,000 followers yeah. and I want to review cars. Literally, it was like, I really like making videos. And what do I know about? What am I passionate about? And what can I access? And that was cars. So... This is going to get a little bit nerdy right now, so <laughs> but bear with me. Right. And no, 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 away, no, no, away. Okay, <laughs> okay, fine. Yeah. So uh, we've got to go back. This is a 2015, 2016. It was really the start of something being, you know, being a YouTuber was a new thing. Mm. Um, but also so was street supercar spotting. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, now it's a phrase that maybe many car enthusiasts are familiar with, the idea of Shmi 150 walking down the street and mm. saying, oh, look, there's a Ferrari, there's a Porsche. Instagram is flooded with incredibly skilled photographers who yeah. find these cars in car parks or leaving hotels and get beautiful shots. But back then, there was probably five or six guys doing it on the street around London. Yeah. Alex Penfold, mm -hmm. uh, Matt 458 MRP, uh, Adam Shah, Luke Gibson, you know, really small group. And they were out at the weekends. Mm -hmm. My office was in Mayfair. And right, so it okay. meant that each day I got the bus from Clapham where I was living to Mayfair and I went through Knightsbridge. Mm -hmm. So I saw all of these cars whilst I was on the bus that the spotters were missing. And I thought, oh, well, I guess I could just jump off the bus if I see a cool car, yeah. make a quick video, uploading right? it, bish, bash, bosh. Like there's the access. So okay. I never needed to drive anything. Mm. I never planned to drive anything. I was inspired by motorbike vloggers who used to drive around with cameras on their helmets and talk <laughs> about what they saw. Mm. Yeah. There was a couple of really hilarious motorbike vloggers who would just drive around or ride around and comment on what they saw. And I thought, well, I'll just do the same, but for supercars. Mm. And, and, and that's, that's kind of where it began. So I didn't need access. The access was there. Yeah, the yeah. cars were in front of me. Mm. Um, and it started off as a spotting, mm. a, a, a car spotting channel. And, I even started off filming everything point of view. I had a camera strapped to my head with an <laughs> elastic band and um, and drove around and just went, oh, look, there's a LaFerrari. And oh, my God, no way. That's a Porsche 911 Turbo. And that I mean, kind of it stuff. is extraordinary, isn't it? For those who have not witnessed it, you know, there is a season. And this season is when, you know, it's too hot in, in, in the Middle East. And mm -hmm. they ship all their supercars over and they just blast around the streets. And for those who have not actually witnessed it, it's a bit of a head screwer, isn't it? Because yeah. it's just insane. Yeah. I have said, especially the last five years, that if you come to central London in the summer, and I'm talking about Knightsbridge, Mayfair, etc., you can see any yeah. new supercar 
that has been released. Like, yeah. like any of the, it yeah. might have been released two months before. It's on the streets yeah. in London. And, and, and amusingly, which is which makes my my teeth turn, is those amazing rare beautiful supercars which have absolutely been destroyed with like chrome wraps and gold <laughs> gold wraps it's like oh no don't do that mm. Please. but you see all sorts eh and it's it's, uh, it's fun it's really good fun it is fun you know it's a it's a really weird one and it's so easy for me to say right you know if anything if you become along the tooth about anything um or you're saying an in industry long enough you start to feel bitter and go oh it was better when i started yeah. and all this <laughs> it's it's become a different thing and obviously we and I say we, it's really more Shmi 150 because he was the originator. Mm. And, and uh, for those that don't know, you know, he was the guy who set out on this kind of supercar vlogging. So different to a journalist or a media outlet, he was showcasing his life mm -hmm. with cars. He was the originator and created this movement of you know now in the summer there are hundreds of people on the streets yeah. of yeah. yeah of Knightsbridge yeah. of Chelsea of Mayfair trying to spot these cars and. Night, rightfully so, the, the residents are kind of quite pissed off about it because suddenly you get yeah. people going on revving engines, you know, flaming Aventadors, as you say, crazy wraps, neon lights, everything you can imagine just to get photographed by some of these guys. Mm. And um, that whole scene is, is insane and really oh, it, it's blown up over the last five or six years because for sure when I started, there was a handful of people videoing mm. And probably two handfuls of people photographing. And so you could really have an amazing time chasing down these incredible yeah, supercars yeah, yeah. around London. It was yeah. it was a buzz for sure. I tell you what, I tell, I, I, I've just come up with an idea, Dave, mm -hmm. which I think would be hilarious, which I think me and you should do. Go on. We should get something really special which, which could compete with these super amazing cars. Something like a, a Princess Van Der Plaat or sure. something stick like that. Stick Dubai plates on it. And just, <laughs> and just and just jazz it right up to the max, right? And then put we'll put some, some hockey plates on it. Yeah. And just go and have a giggle and see if we can we, we can get, you know, covertly filmed. Absolutely. And up and down. Fits. Up should and down do outside, uh, outside Harrods. I think we should do <laughs> yeah. that. We should, we should do that for the should afternoon, honestly, it? as you say. Something really ridiculous. Really nasty. Like just a, an AMC pace or something everywhere. Like Yeah, yeah. Something, yes. something awful. Is that a Trabant. A Trabant. <laughs> <laughs> no, we should totally do this. Sam, I have a couple of questions for you. Well, two in one here. Um, do you think that you'd have been able to start the channel today in the same way that you did back in 2014 i think it was or do you think that the 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 world is perhaps too crowded in terms of content now and the second part of that is that in terms of your your contemporaries i, I suppose you know people like shmi and people like supercars of london etc cetera, etc cetera, do you all have a a sort of a respect for each other and do you do you essentially do you get on and you all sort of occupy the same kind of space or is there a little bit of sort of rivalry well, well he got this i want to get this i want to get one over on him how does it work i hate them all no, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'll, I'll come back to that bit because it's the slightly more boring or, or easier one to answer but I don't think I could do, I don't think I could start the channel again today. Mm. Um, this It's massively overcrowded, not just as a platform, but the automotive space. Mm. Because what, again, I'm going to credit Shmi because I just, I do not have the ego to class myself in this kind of group mm. of uh, early channels that maybe inspired others. But there was definitely a thought of, oh, I've got a nice car and a video camera is now just 300 quid on Amazon. Sure. Yeah. I can be a YouTuber. Mm, yeah. And we've seen so much of that uh, over the last five, six, seven years. And what it's meant is that kind of authentic, exciting narrative of, hey, here am I, and this is what I'm up to, and come with me on this adventure, kind of got diluted, and it just felt like everyone was buying a new supercar and wrapping it and putting an exhaust on it and taking it to Harrods. And... Uh, even I got sick of it, you know, like, like I, I was in it and I was like, God, we, I got to change something because this is getting way too repetitive. So I get a lot of people now who message me and ask me about starting channels. Mm -hmm. And I think the key thing is, firstly, if you're trying to set up a channel as a business, I mean, good luck, go and find something else to do, because mm. it's like saying, I'm going to become a top selling pop artist. You know, like <laughs> it, it's the percentage or the, the chances of really making it a career are now fewer than ever. Yeah. But also, and you know, I can say this, you know, knowing of both of you, the platform, it, it's personality led, right? You know, mm -hmm. fundamentally, the topic isn't that important. If 
Jason went on a rant right now about the hat that he's wearing and mm. and where he, where he found it and what's important about a flat. Or the, I would be probably quite captivated because he'd be so passionate about it and he's a great storyteller and mm -hmm. I'd probably follow and listen to that whereas you, you don't if, mind I'm going to write that idea don't you <laughs> <laughs> right rant about hats listen Sam, Sam, Sam the, the, the reality is that actually we've got another half a dozen episodes to try and craft and actually at the moment we're, we're, we're drastically running out of material so what you're suggesting here is not only entertaining but deeply sure. helpful yes, okay, so no problem yes, at all thank you for that. Mm. trying to help uh, <laughs> my agent will invoice you afterwards sure uh, <laughs> but yeah because I think if you come at it from like a business point of view, I'm going to do what Shmi150 does, but you're not, you don't have that passion that he does for the intricate nerdy mm. details. And he, I'm sure he wouldn't mind me saying that. Or you're not Super Cousin London where you get super overly excited about exhaust flames and Aventadors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. you've, you've got to have a genuine passion. Mm. Um, and the, then it doesn't really matter about the rest of it. So my passion at the start was making videos, you know, and, and, and really the cars came later. My, my knowledge was not that big at the beginning. I, I've learned a lot. I've, I've met some incredible people. And I think today just making videos on the streets of London, I think it's overdone. I, th I don't mm. think, I think it'd be hard to cut through. Um, so a lot of it was luck of timing for sure. And then, yeah, my contemporaries, I, I keep mentioning them. We all get on. It's really boring. We, we're all in WhatsApp groups. We go to enough events <laughs> together that we see each other regularly enough. <laughs> I would say a handful of them are like my actual mates. I mean, yeah. Supercars London was head usher at my wedding and things yeah. like that. So yeah, right, a genuine... That's Paul, isn't it? That's Paul, exactly. Mm. Genuine great friend. Others, you would say, I guess, are great colleagues. I'm sure both of you know have been to enough events here and there. And they're people you get on with, but maybe you don't go for beers and mm -hmm. dinner with them all the time. And that's kind of what it's like. Yeah, um, yeah. It's weird because when you're online or on social media, you do a video together. And if, if you get on and you've got chemistry, you can make a great video. And everyone goes, oh, they're such good friends. Mm. But you might not see each other for another two years. But when you come to make that video, it's very easy. It's very natural sure. to make a video. And you're both working. So... Yeah. Yeah, and, and also, both of you are benefiting, then, aren't you? I, I would, I would imagine, without being too kind of uh, calculating about the whole thing. But you know, you're thinking, well, hang on, I've got this audience, and he or she has got that audience. Put them together. In theory, we've got double the bubble, haven't we? You know, I've only ever had one experience where somebody very clearly didn't want me in any of their content, but mm. I was filming with them. And is that right? Yeah, and but uh, <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> I, I didn't. I was like, fine. Like you yeah. could have just said, like, yeah. like it doesn't work for my channel. Um, I, I, but I'm, I, you know, everyone's doing their own thing. We are businesses now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. for whatever reason, you know, that, that didn't suit his content at the time. So no problem. Like, I made a cool video and it was a good collaboration from my side. And, um, but that, you know, that's one time in nearly 10 years. So yeah, yeah. pretty much everyone, it's a weird job being a YouTuber. So you meet another one, you're like, Ooh, friend. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I mean, this is probably impossible for you to to, to answer but just you know me having a i mean i do look i do what what watch your stuff but just having a quick browse over some of the screen grabs there's certainly a penchant for porsche but before you but before which is great because i have exactly the same gene as you have i think <laughs> and um but if you could choose some real classics over the years which you just go oh my god that was oh that was ace not necessarily just ace for you but also or it could have been, but just a, an ace production, an ace move. Mm. It's something which it ticked every box. If you could pick one or two. Um, okay, so the foot, I, let's just go with the gut, right? What comes to the mind at first? Um, Sebastian Vettel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, very early on in my career, I, I mean, I, I must have had, I don't know, maybe 100 or 150,000 subscribers. I had the chance to film with Seb. Um, for some work I was doing with Shell and they put me in a 488 at the time. It was kind of a new car and we just had 10 minutes around a, I don't even know where we were, an airfield. Mm -hmm. And I just, everything about it was amazing. You know, the whole time the Ferrari pressed him and said, you have no time with him. No, don't look him in the eye. Don't <laughs> smell him. You know, like, and I'm there, you know, obviously my whole background was talent media management. That was the PR that I did. So I was very used to working with talent. So I, I knew what they were doing to me. I could see through it. I was fine, no problem. As prepared as possible. You'll have 10 minutes. Now you'll have seven. I think yeah. you might have three. By the time I'd set up all the cameras and I mm. stepped away, Seb was with a group chatting with him and Mark Genet, famous Ferrari test driver. And I wandered over and said, okay, cool, I'm ready. As in, let's go. And he looked at me and said, what is a YouTuber? And I was like, 
Oh, yeah, right. like, how do we get into this? And we chatted for about 25 minutes before any cameras rolled. He was genuinely... He's, so nice chat. He's a real good guy, isn't he? Oh, my God. Just the, the yeah. most genuinely interested, mm. yeah, yeah. nicest, fi funniest... And for me, being a massive F1 fan, okay, arguably not a Vettel fan, awkward, but, um, uh, you know, <laughs> a massive F1 fan, I was like, this is incredible. And then we got in the car. He drove like an absolute god. Um, moments that I'll never forget. I can still kind of feel the feeling of that car floating like it did. Yeah. Um, and the video got a million odd views. So yeah, brilliant. I think that stands out very quickly as being like a bit of a highlight, but there have been so many, you know, I, I got to drive a bloody F1 car. That was fairly outrageous. <laughs> um, I took my Ferrari 360 to the top of Mount Tady, or whatever it is in um, Tenerife. That was yeah. a big adventure. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've had some incredible moments. Um, it's hard to pinpoint one, but let's go with Vettel because that's what came to my mind yeah. at first. Do you know what? He, he's a, he's a real, he's a, he's a, he's a, um... I think he's very unique in that world, actually. Really, he's, a, he's a standout character because he's so different mm. as a human being to all of them in that he's incredibly principled. Um, uh, he's not... He's not a... He's not a... Uh, he's, uh, you know, he's, he's, not, he's not politically tricky. Mm. He's just a good bloke, isn't he? I'm, mm. I mean, I'll never forget. We, we, it was the Race of Champions in London, actually. And me and Andy Prio had eventually beat Germany which was Vettel and Hulkenberg in the final of the of the Nations Cup on the Friday night and anyway you, you can imagine there was a there was a big party but before the party we were doing loads of PR and stuff and we were the last ones to leave and our changing rooms were the you know the changing rooms at, at, at the Ste stadium so it's mm -hmm. all all like a football it's foot football yeah you know change room so everyone's got their own little bit with their names on and Seb's all kit out of everybody, was perfectly packed up on the Friday night by him for the for the Saturday morning, and the rest of the place was carnage. But anyway, <laughs> I, I spotted, and this event was in November, I think, end of November, so it was a bit cold. And I spotted his 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 Ferrari beanie. I thought, right, we're having that. We're having that as a, as a, as a scalp. We scalped him. <laughs> God, was he pissed off the next day? And I, I went to see him and said, look, so, sorry. I had your hat last night, and he couldn't he couldn't work out in his head why I wanted to take his hat. And I said, "I oh, know it's it was just a bit of fun." He said, "Yeah, mm. but but you stole it." I said, yeah. no, no, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> he said, "Well, no, you did." And it took me some time to understand where he was coming from. It was fine in the end, but really lo lovely bloke. And there was that great story last t two years ago at Sir Silverstone on the Monday. You know, oh, okay, it was a bit of PR, but he did it all day. He trawled the grandstands up and down with bin bags and tidied up. Mm. And, and I, I think... And that wasn't like a 10-minute photo op. He did it all day. Yeah. Fair I, play. And I, I honestly <laughs> think that, you know, not knowing the behind the scenes, that was probably something that he wanted to do. Absolutely. Aston Martin or Silverstone went, send a bloody photographer for this. You know, yeah, I think yeah. he probably mm. asked or said, yeah, I want to I help. Agree. And then okay. they saw the PR opportunity rather than a cliched moment of like, here's Seb helping clear up. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, I was amazed. I, I got the opportunity to work with them three times in the end. And I was I was blown away by, yeah, his genuine interest in life. In, in every, He just wanted to learn and understand about everything. He was yeah. amused by things. He was intrigued by things. Um, and yeah, having worked with talent for all those years beforehand... I knew how rare it was for someone at his level yeah. to genuinely pay attention to everything going on around him yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. and want to find out. And and yeah, it's yeah, great, great, great guy. And let let's see what the future holds. I guess for him and F one, right? Absolutely. So so here we go, Dave. So, so, sorry, I know you're desperate to get another question, but That's right. we've asked some for you know your your ace moments. You know what's coming next. Oh, God. <laughs> There's got to be some rough ones where you've yeah. you've bent a car or... Give and I don't mean bent it because you ran out of talent. I'm not saying that, but you, know, you reverse it into something. Because I've had some hideous mm. on t filming TV, as we all have. Well, Spill I mean, the beans. <laughs> we want a stinker here, Sam. Oh, there have been many. Mm. <laughs> no, but you, I mean, you, you definitely will know, Jason, like how many times things can 
can go wrong that you can somehow patch up and it looks all all right in the end yeah. of it. You know, it was a yeah, horror yeah, yeah. story behind the scenes. Yeah. Oh no, uh, 812 GTS. 812 GTS from Ferrari. <laughs> fair, uh, fair play. Pretty casual one. <laughs> um, <laughs> picked it up from uh, Slough, because people that don't know, Ferrari's headquarters in the UK, Slough. Slough. Yeah. Down the road from uh, me. Drove down to my parents mm-hmm. in the Cotswolds. I thought this will be perfect. It's sun- summer's day mm-hmm. in the Cotswolds. What a perfect place to film this car. Given it large on some back roads that I've obviously driven since I was 17 years old. And there's a sort of quite aggressive T-junction. So I know to see from the T-junction, you kind of need to be really square on to look around the hedge. <laughs> so I pull the car a little bit to the left just so I can look. And a woman in a mini comes flying around the corner and I'm obviously a little bit more in the middle of the road than I should be in my time. Bash into the front end of the car. (gasps) And I was like, oh no. The thing is, I stopped. Obviously, the 812 has got mega brakes. So I slam on the road. The car stopped, but she could not slow down Mm. her car. So she just comes piling into the front end of the car. And I was just like... Isn't that just the worst feeling in the world? When you're in something which A, A is beautiful. And B, mm-hmm. more importantly, it ain't yours. No. Even though it's a press card. And, and sorry, and C is is slightly expensive. Well, I mean, really. <laughs> yeah. um, and I that was genuinely the first time, apart from the R8 instant, that I had been... Like, I was like, I don't know how this works. Like, yeah. am I liable? Like, what, yeah. what happens... What happens now? Like, 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 are, are you crash? in there like, thinking, where did I put that copy of the contract? Did I put it in the glove compartment? And can I read the, the, the fine print Literally, quickly? I was suddenly freaking out, being like, how do I blame this entirely on some other person? Mm. Um, and so I was sitting there just kind of a bit like, All right, what do I do? And uh, the PR for Ferrari in the UK, Northern Europe, is, he's a very nice guy and a very, you know, mad fat guy. Jason, Jason, exactly. Yeah, he's lovely indeed. So I called Jason, I was like, hi, Jason. Um, slight <laughs> issue. <laughs> and also I explained the situation. You know what he said was the best thing ever? He goes, oh, Sam, not a problem. The amount of journalists that have called me with their car in a hedge, uh, this is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So is it drivable? Fine, I'll come and pick it up. Um, so uh, that was a bad impression of Jason, by the way. I did a bit of service there. But uh, no, I mean, it's... If I'm really honest, that's as bad as it's been. Right. I've been so lucky. Well, do you know oh, what? I've as I say, so you know, as, you know, in terms of if we look at it from a mileage perspective, in terms of the amount of miles that you've covered in the what approaching ten years of the channel, to actually only really have a couple of those, it's pretty good going, isn't it? You know, I mean, it's, it's been it's been some pretty rosy days. I don't want to get ahead of myself because you know, obviously, you never know what's around the corner. Touch some wood. Touch yeah, the desk. luckily, yeah, that's exactly what <laughs> yeah. I'm doing. I've done it multiple times, but. I I would say that I'm probably quite sensible on the road. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's maybe done me a disservice in terms of my speed on tracks and things like that over the years because I just I just do lean quite heavily on the side of caution. Not to say I won't drive briskly and I enjoy driving, but um, I, I definitely am. I like to think I'm a bit more sensible, which has maybe saved my skin in a, in a few occasions. But it's the other, you know, it's the other nutters out there you never know about, right? And probably will serve you well in the manufacturers let, let, letting you have motors. Exactly. I, I guess. Mm-hmm. You know, because, you know, I, 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 I know from my side, being on doing the, the terrestrial t- TV stuff, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it used to be very easy to get cars. Very, very, okay. very easy. And... Um, it's it's getting harder and harder as as time's gone on and and press fleets have shrunk and they're working you know they're sweating these assets more and I can imagine you know particularly as you know in in your game if you get a little bit of a reputation it'd be very I would imagine it'd be very easy for them to go oh do you know what we'd rather let rather let him have it this week rather than so and I it's think really you've done, interesting yourself proud there well but it's you know and it's it's the evolution of YouTubers within the automotive space has been Mm. so interesting because I would say like, it's still a new ish thing that manufacturers will loan YouTubers cars. You know, Mm. it started off with the odd invite to a launch. Then maybe it was a UK launch. Then maybe it was a day loan. Then it was a weekend loan. And you know, it's changed and it's evolved. And like, I guess more traditional journalists, there's certain manufacturers have relationships with certain YouTubers and things like that. Um, but so okay this is going to be a really niche reference i was watching a video an uh, old vi- m- piece that you made jason of a ferrari 575 hgtc yeah, you drove yeah. from Maranello, i guess to the nurburgring or you drove it some to yeah, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. cuz i was going to look at a car to potentially buy so I, that's the why i watched there, the piece that's a, that's well old but yeah it I was a throwback it I mean, was 2004 it was or something f- like that f- Fiorano to to uh, to nurburgring yeah that, that's exactly the piece so this is what I think is interesting. So 
I think traditional media, terrestrial TV and big magazines have a different relationship with manufacturers in the sense where uh, performance car tests, where they'll compare lots of different cars or they'll do sp bespoke pieces. You know, I'm going to take the new 911 Dakar to Sweden or whatever. Mm. We're still very much more in a controlled box. Some manufacturers are good. Porsche are great to me. Me saying, look, I want to drive a car to Austria for the week. They're like, yeah, off you go. Like, go have fun. Wow. But the creative ideas of I want to take a Ferrari from here to here maybe doesn't always happen. So I'm not going to ask you about that one because you might not remember. But how often were you pitching ideas to manufacturers for TV and how much were they coming to you saying, we've got a chance for you to drive this car from here to here? Back in, back in the very, until very recently, it was the, it was the, 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 the it was them approaching us and saying, mm -hmm. look, we've got a window on this car. What can we do? You know, you, you, you can be either first or second car, car show to have it. What do you want to do? O open book. We'll pay for everything. And and it was a, a I mean in particular that 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 shoot was I mean he's he's been retired from Ferrari for years and he was their press officer for was a global press officer a guy called Davide who was just a fruitcake and he would he would literally if we said <laughs> right what we want to do is we want to get do you know we we want the Italian Air Force. Oh no, we want a private jet. He go. What about the air force? And he was always <laughs> trying to just get yeah. it bigger, bigger. So, but but do you know what? Those days are, are nearly always uh, they're nearly gone actually. Mm. It's mm. Uh, and I think it's it's because I mean certainly if you look at if you look at for instance uh, Mercedes, their whole press fleet it's been decimated by the accountants internally, and their budget for doing. PRE type press mm. stuff. It's just it's gone. Mm -hmm. And okay, you know, you, you you will know this more more than most. You know, the 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 cost to to produce something really quite beautiful has come down massively. Providing you've got skilled camera operators and yeah. but but the equipment cost back in the back in you know, fifteen years ago, it was a struggle to get a camera in the car mm. next to me because mm. it was so big. Mm. And we couldn't there weren't enough mounts you know, to stick it to, so the technology has come has enabled YouTube pe people like yourself to, to produce this. And co consequently, the, you know, the manufacturers, they've kind of realized that they don't need to be spending absolute mm. fortunes, which they were with the terrestrial TV shows. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure you, you'll, you'll know that the, the budgets for, in fact, you, you, Dave will probably also know, you know, the, the Christmas party budgets, from manufacturers, they're, they're all gone as well. Oh, absolutely. I mean, all the, as you say, all of the best days are, are sadly behind us. And, yeah. and the world is a very, very different place now than it was in, you know, perhaps 2004 or 2005, as you were sort of saying before, Sam. Um, I'm going to go back even further now, if, if I may. And before it all got very sexy in terms of, you know, your wheels, I want to go back to... <laughs> I was wondering I wanna, where you were going with that then. <laughs> I want to go back to your first car, which I would imagine was less sexy yes. and i want the first car and i want the early car history please mr fane go okay uh, uh mark for golf 1.4 liter okay that's, straight that's to decent yeah, that's, that's well then, then, then i ruin it bear with me okay. uh, straight to halfords i bought the chrome strip with the plastic strips and i and i i chromed every single line <laughs> of the car. oh you've <laughs> got to you must have a picture of this oh dig it out there was chrome yeah. everywhere I don't know. I think it was Pimp My Ride era. I don't know. Mm. What, I, I got really, really cheap aftermarket wheels, so cheap that I went over a pothole and it cracked two of them. Um, <laughs> it was the most bling Mark IV Golf in the world, yeah. um, but loved it. That was amazing. And then it all got very strange because my dear old grandpa, who was amazing, died and left me. Uh, about I think he made it for like ten grand, and I was like, car done, car. <laughs> yeah, 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 um, that's that. what he would have wanted. Yeah, Grandpa deposit, knew I loved cars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I bought a three thirty i saloon BMW, nice. <laughs> yeah, which nice. I never questioned why it was so cheap. Um, it had a fuel leak. I had en endless fuse box issues. I'd, I used to, doors just wouldn't open, wouldn't get locked. I'd brake failure. I mean, the car was a piece of crap, but. Mm. I was 19. With and a it drifted well round saloon. roundabouts. Oh, my too God. Well, actually, too, I, too well. I was like, I'm a, this is amazing. Like, I just, <laughs> so 
that was great, but it just literally kept breaking. So my parents said, you, you've got to get rid of that car because it's, it's a joke. It's dangerous. Um, so I went to Mark 1 Audi S3 with the Recaros mm -hmm. and nice. white leather. Everywhere I took that car, everyone said, oh, this is so nice. But I was like, I'm beyond a hatchback. I used to own a 330i saloon, so <laughs> I'm not keeping this. Bought a 4.2 VA A6 because I thought I could put an okay. RS6 body kit on it. Yeah. Did 3 MPG around London, so that didn't <laughs> last long. Mm -hmm. And then and then I ended up in an Audi TTS on finance, my first car financed. And that's I started the channel with that car. Uh, so that yeah. kind okay. of... From from then on, everything is slightly tracked on social media. But my first few videos, maybe the first six months of content on the channel, were with the Audi TTS, which I had for like three years. I loved the car. Yeah. It was the second generation car, and it was it was amazing. And for me at that time, I was you know twenty three, twenty four. It felt like a baby R eight. Yeah, yeah. um, really, really cool car. And since then, oh, it just it's really long winded, and I. Embarrassing, I actually forget some of the cars and then everyone gives me crap for it. And so well, I'm I'll tell you touch. what, to ease you through, through this, just give, give us your, if I said, like, just pick pick a fave. Yeah, okay, well, Ferrari 360 Modena, which is a slightly controversial topic right now that m my audience, if they're listening to this, will know because I'm really? literally selling think, it. Do you think, not, not 355, because it's not a pretty car, uh, the 360, is it? Oh, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't think so it is. How very dare you, Jess? Wash your mouth out with soap, young man. <laughs> Old man, rather. Um, I, I would, I, compared to 355, it's not pretty. Oh, it's a bit roundy, a bit bulbousy. Do you not? Do you not? I mean, it's very difficult for you to agree because you... You add one. Yeah, it's so so. It's a it's definitely a generational thing for me. So my all time dream car is a Challenge for Dali. That's my all time dream car. Okay. Yeah. Um, and the Modena, I think, is growing into its looks, uh, <laughs> and has been for a while. But but that was my yeah. when I was growing was up. Your, that was the Ferrari on the road. I missed the three five five. I was yeah. too young, you know. Like by the time I was out and about doing stuff and noticing cars, I would have been. I guess, yeah, 12, 13, something like that, when the 360s were out and about. So I was really... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, yeah. I, guess, um, I guess it's of it, it was of its time in your lifetime as well. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and that's exactly it. And, you know, my, my all-time idol and hero is Schumacher. There mm. was a bit of an affiliation with Schumacher there. It was those eras. They had the badges yeah. of the championship. So, yeah, yeah I, I bought that car. I bought uh, the manual 360 Modena back in 2017. Mm -hmm. It was as racy a spec as you could get from the factory. I had the bucket seats, roll cage, harnesses, fire extinguisher, everything. And I've spent the last six years just turning it into the ultimate modern. We put Challenge ECU, Challenge Stradale, Exhaust. Stra I've yeah, taken pipes. it all over the world. We did Finale, oh, what's it called? Um, yeah, Finale Monday. I did, but also Mila Mila tribute last mm -hmm. year. So it's, it's done everything. It's been my pride and joy. It's the kind of like, you can see, actually, I've got anyone watching it. There's a picture. I'm just pointing at it. You can see it over so, your right it, shoulder. Sir. It's the kind of hero car of the channel, but it's literally on collecting cars as we speak. So oh, is it really? Oh, you're parting with it. I, it's a monumental change in my life. Such oh my a seismic one that even my wife was involved in the decision. Um, wow. Yeah, it's... Uh, I, the quote I posted today on Instagram is, you cannot grow without change. So... Uh, there is a plan in place. I'll be mysterious and elusive and YouTuber esque about it and say, watch yeah, this space. Brilliant. But um, well, yeah, it's... do you know? I mean, it, it actually links us very beautifully on uh, Sam because I was about to say to you, um, you know, I wasn't going to say what is your current ride because I I know it's more than one. But what does the fleet currently consist of? Obviously, including the Ferrari, which has not yet left your homestead. <laughs> not yet sold. Um, so I was super lucky to get a 992 GT3 slot, uh, Porsche 911, yeah. uh, which I'd been badgering my dealer for forever. So I picked that up at the end of, uh, sorry, so the start of this year? Yeah, the start of this green year. Green one, wow, yeah, okay. that we've green seen on the one. channel. Yeah, It's a green one. It's got Pasha seat inserts. Mm. It's manual. It's as touring a spec as you can get mm. with a wing car. Very, beautiful. very sexy car. I love oh, it. Yeah. Took it for its first track day a couple of weeks ago at the Red Bull Ring. Blew my mm. mind. I'm not a track guy, but I was just like, this is unbelievable. So that's that's the kind of, you know, uh, big funny toy. Uh, Jaguar have lent me an F-Pace SVR for quite a considerable okay. amount of time. So mm -hmm. I'm really not complaining about that. Mm -hmm. um, and this week I'm driving an Abarth 500E. So, so actually, 
my garage lineup that I own is the 360 and the GT3. Yeah. Um, I'm not That's a not bad line. It's not bad, is it? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, do I mean, yeah. you know, it's, it's funny, actually, because we would, we would quite often ask um, our guests on here, Sam, to give us their fantasy two-car garage. And to be honest with you, you know, I mean, you, you're pretty close to it there, aren't you? I mean... You know, um, it's, it's um, a know, decent it's a decent pairing, isn't it, JP? It's tough with a baby. Uh, we've sure. got a nine month old. So, so okay. there, there's no. nothing tough about that with a baby. Roof boxes, they well, work I mean, great. Well, so. Plenty, plenty of room in a nine or eleven. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, I'm looking at installing receipts as we speak. Um, it's, got, it's got it's got a little bench on the back. It's got a bench. I think Isofix just ram it in. It works yeah, somehow. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm super lucky and fortunate, and it feels like you know we all got caught up. YouTube has got a bad name, a bad rep years ago for chopping and changing cars too often and there are definitely some channels who have amassed 25 car collections that blows my mind yeah. but um I, I always just thought i just i'm gonna buy the cars i want and if people are yeah. interested then great but I'm, I'm not gonna spend money for views like that and, and i'm i'm so happy with where i've ended up so at the moment i told my wife that's it for now but <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and listen yeah. you you myself jason and everybody listening and watching knows that that is a complete lie <laughs> Yeah, absolute tosh. <laughs> I'll send you some links to stuff on Auto Trader after this. <laughs> so does your wife know it's complete tosh? And she knows you. <laughs> you. You'll think, oh, I've sold that well. Oh, really? Well, she knows me so well that the Abarth week-long loaner turned up today, and she went, "Have we bought this?" <laughs> I was like, no, "Don't worry." <laughs> I was like, "Don't worry, don't worry. It's only a loan." So here's the thing: electric cars. Yes, no. Like them? Uh, don't. Well, yeah, I'm I'm all for them. I, I my big thing is uh, it cannot be the final solution, as mm. as a lot of people maybe proclaim mm -hmm. that that it is. Um, I think in this situation, I, I live in central-ish London. Uh, it's great. I literally think of that our bath. It, I can charge it at home. I'll probably do 10, 15 miles in it each day. I don't even need to charge it. Wonderful, love it, brilliant. Mm. Um, the long distance thing, big question mark. Yeah. But but my bigger thing is firstly enthusiast cars. Let's face it, really hard to make electric cars that appeal to I guess us three um, from a driving point mm -hmm. of view. Yeah. And then also, uh, not to get political, but there are so many parts of the world where electric infrastructure, let alone cost of electric vehicles, um, is realistic. Um, yeah. And they come with their own, you know, green issues. Mm -hmm. They're much greener. But so, yeah, I'm a, I'm hugely invested in the synthetic fuel chat yeah, for too. the slightly more niche uses. I'm aware that that also can't be the final solution. Yeah. But for our world, um, that excites me more. Me too. I think for the day to day commuter in a central urbanized area with, you know, good money knocking around, then there you go. EV makes sense. But yeah, um, I, t I, t I, t I t tell you what, though, Dave, you are in good company because most of the people which we, we you know, we, we speak to, are, are, you know, on, on our little show here, they're all of the same opinion, actually. Mm -hmm. Everyone's like, it's going to be a mixed environment, but nearly everybody, because they're into cars, goes, oh, you know, I, I really w hope the e-fuel works. I hope that kicks off. It, it's It's such a... Yeah, so we actually put some synthetic fuel in my 360 last year. Um, there's a company called P1 Fuels who've been doing it all for WRC. So all yeah. of their, work you know, carbon... It worked perfectly. It makes no difference. That's the whole point, right? Mm -hmm. That's literally the whole point. Just put it in off you go. Um, but I'm I'm excited and intrigued by an electric Porsche Boxster. Why not? Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that's going to be an awful thing. I think that MG side... Like, I'm all for these things, but there are also millions of cars that already exist yeah, that with a carbon neutral fuel can continue to you know serve a purpose yeah. for and multiple this is reasons it. this is it isn't it and, and actually this is the the conversation that we we have quite a lot jason isn't it because for me the the most green thing you can possibly do is to continue to use existing hardware you know it's already been made the energy has already been yeah. uh, spent if you like if you can keep that car or that vehicle on the road for the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years, there's nothing more green than that, in my opinion. You know, And that's what we should be going towards. And also, as you rightly say, not only in terms of the individual vehicle hardware, but also in terms of the infrastructure which, which exists around the world, is that if we were to employ a landscape that involved at least synthetic fuels, then you can still continue to have the petrol stations that you find in every country across the globe. Yeah. I thought, I mean, I'm sure it was thought through, but Porsche took me down to Chile to see that 
factory that they've invested mm -hmm. in, the synthetic fuel factory they've invested in. And we did a bit of a drive around one of those Patagonian national parks, yeah. which was a trip of a lifetime. But it made it so evidently clear that that part of the world relies on combustion engine vehicles for so many reasons, not just, you know, because there's no EV infrastructure, mm. but also if a if, a, if an old Toyota Hilux pickup truck breaks down mm. in a Patagonian mm. national yeah. forest, a man with a hammer can probably fix yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Hammer's yeah. around the corner <laughs> with, 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 a, with a hammer and, and, a, and a set of spanners. He'll have it sorted in half an hour. Which is, you know, that, and that's a big yeah. thing, you know, as you say, like existing hardware, but also knowledge base. You know, we've yeah. been keeping, you know, uh, combustion engines running in some shape or form around the world for hundreds of years. Mm. Well, a lot of this new electric... so. I guess, you know, it, there's a lot of question marks, aren't there? We're all looking at a, a new future, hydrogen, all this stuff. Mm, mm. It's exciting. It is exciting. I just get stressed by everyone is like one or the other. Like, yeah. oh, no, like, since then it feels like crap. Like, it's yeah. all EV. Like, just relax. Like, mm. why can't we all agree that yeah. there's lots of options? Unfortunately, and, I think that's the state of the world now with, with with the thing which we all do which is social me media everybody mm -hmm. it's very easy for people to put themselves in echo chambers and i, th I think that's no i don't know how that's how we're going to ch change that i think i think like most things jason i think um there won't be it won't be a black or white situation i think that it but i be, like black or white i know white. you I like, don't like I, gray. I, I know you don't like gray and this is why we love you but you know i, I think that the reality is that it will be a, a mixture of all sorts of things sam yeah. you know and and that is probably the way to get through i'm mindful that we are rapidly running out of time so sam we have two final questions for you if we may and then we will we will let you go and go back to your your wife and your family and your diminishing collection of cars. Um, <laughs> or potentially first, growing collection. <laughs> the, first, the first of our final two questions is this. Of all the cars you've ever owned in your lifetime, you have to stick with one and one only. All of the others are being taken away on multiple low loaders. What is the one car that you're going to stick with because it does everything for you? I will surprise, I don't know if I'll surprise my audience. Uh, Jaguar F Type R, uh, okay. weirdly. I I have owned or had one in the garage kind of on and off for six or seven years, really. Yeah, I had an original really F Type R rear wheel drive. I just had a all wheel drive. Jaguar have lent me variants. I keep coming back to it. It's yeah. the car I owned when I met my wife. I did most adventures with. It's when the channel blew up. I owned an F Type it's just a fantastic car to live mm. with. And I'm a Ferrari guy, then a Porsche guy, then a Jag guy. But that that's the one that I would just... I'll have another one at some point. I literally just sold one, but I'll have another one at some point. I know, I know that. Well, so. it's, a great, it's a great bit of kit, isn't it? It's, it's a great, great all-rounder. That's exactly it. It's not necessarily the best at anything, but mm. that makes it fantastic. And it's yeah. one of those cars that has always managed to somehow bring a smile to my face at any speed. Um, and I've done big mileage in those cars and, and they just yeah it always wins for me wow and the last question which i, I quite possibly dave do you reckon I, I think this could be the perfect question for mm. you bear I'm, in I'm, mind i'm already excited you know, your 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 you know your early juices about getting into the into the music business and then mm. it got you into cars so we me, me and dave always believe that that music and cars are particularly well suited so we want to know about your fantasy drive yeah you know, where are you where you going, what you're listening to, and importantly, what you in. Okay, what am I listening to is easy. So, uh, Under My Thumb by Rolling Stones. Actually, okay. Rolling Stones is kind of my go-to for a lot of road trips. Mm. Um, cool. I, yeah, sort of, I guess, 60s rock and roll is probably what I listen to the most. Um, the where and what am I in is the really tough bit. I'm. It could be, it could be a dream. It could be a dream. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go romantic. There's a road in New Zealand called the Thermal Explorer Highway. Um, I think on the North Island of New Zealand, I drove it in a Bentley Continental and it was sunset. And have they got Yorkshire accents there? No, uh, <laughs> that was just... <laughs> I just wanted to somehow. Where was that favorite. accent from? Because I, I didn't to be... immediately think New Zealand. <laughs> it was supposed thought, to be that movie Barnsley. guy. No, I was <laughs> on the Thermal Explorer Highway. <laughs> that was that was was a man. Anyway, sorry, I should stop doing it. Um, I I'm going to say a Ferrari 250 short wheelbase. Oh, just because Ca Cali. 
Well, I mean, yes, because if it's the sunset on that road, then yeah. yes. Yeah. But I would take any 250 yeah. shore yeah. base. Right. Um, Wouldn't we all? I think that's my go-to. I don't know if you'd be able to hear the music over the car, but yeah, I think that that scene is probably what I'm what I'm looking for. <sighs> It's not a bad scene, is it, Jason? And I think it's on that beautiful, beautiful bit of Antipodean imagery, you need to take us out. Well, sadly, uh, that is it for this week's for Fueling Around. I mean, we, we, we could, you know, we're amongst fair friends here, mm. kindred spirits, we could speak mm. all day. Uh, but sadly, like I say, that is it. Fueling Around is obviously powered by Adrian Flux. As the UK's largest specialist insurance broker, Adrian Flux will tailor a quote to your exact needs and help save you money on your car, your bike, or even your home insurance. Dave, as always, a big thanks to you, but a huge thank you to our special guest this week, the one and only Sam Fain, a.k.a. Seen Food Glass. Thanks, thank Sam. Superb stuff, Sam. Thank you very much indeed. Don't forget, as always, you can get in touch with us on Twitter at Jason Plato or at David Vitti. And if you've liked what you've heard, feel free to give the five-star rating, press the follow button, and share the podcast on all your socials. Thanks for listening, everyone. And, um, well, we'll see you next time. Ta-ra. Ta-ra.